Greetings, Marsh here. Welcome to episode 124 of my modded factorial playthrough. Well, let's extend the belts as much as we can and connect some of this stuff. Get Saffrite and Jivalite in here. And actually, exactly how we do it is kind of important at this point because we can't just do something like this because that's not going to pull evenly. And there's crazy stuff you can do to try to make it pull evenly. But instead, how about we just make a pattern? I don't believe we have the correct balancer for this. Because what we need to do is go from three belts to four. So if you want to pull one belt off of a group of belts, then you need a balancer that goes from however many belts you have to one more belt. And this is actually kind of important because we need it to be uh, count perfect. So regardless of how many uh, belts are being used or blocked, we need it to always uh, balance evenly. Because if we don't, it's going to constantly cause problems because... Either it's going to be like this where the belt isn't moving at all, or it's going to be moving at full speed. And under both of those conditions are when you run into problems with balancers. So we don't need just a typical balancer for this. We need a count perfect balancer. And you can find count perfect balancers. They're just substantially larger than their non-balanced uh, cousins or their, their imperfect cousins. And I've uh, got one here. Didn't come from... The wiki, I think it was a Reddit post or something like that that linked to it, and it's fairly large. You see, when you when you look at it, you're like, there has to be an easier way to do it. And the answer is there is an easier way, it's just not as good. <laughs> so we start with our three belts going in. Two balancers there. An additional two there, and one there. And then underground, which skips that. Basically what this is, you'll you'll notice that there's it's like two balancers put on top of each other to make it work. So this is like the first part. So we need to do the loop around there. This goes straight. So it's basically like, that's a three to four. And then, which you'll probably recognize as a four to four balancer. That should be it, let me double check. Sure seems like it. This is going to take our three and then have four, and we're gonna to have to use this. So <laughs> when you consider the alternative of doing that <laughs> compared to this, where our extra is like that, it's like substantial difference in complexity. But this is an imperfect system that just doesn't work. And it'll rear its head when you're either at full capacity or zero capacity, <laughs> which are both kind of problematic because you're going to be at both of those extremes a lot. <laughs> so let's make a, another blueprint. Let's copy it and let's call it. We're going to use this very often. This is going to be our three to four. Probably just at the end, I guess. Okay, so we're delivering resources on these two belts. And, and that balancer is huge and would be problematic in a small bus. But with a bus this big, you see how much space we have of just straight belt? So it's really not going to be a problem to place it in. There might be some situations where it gets in the way, but for the most part... Uh, it'll actually be pretty easy to integrate. 
So, Sapphirite and Jivalite. Definitely going to want the truck for this. Okay, we're at the Jivalite. Let's see. There it is. So it's going to have to go right here. We're just going to fill ourselves up with lots of resources we're going to eventually have to clean up. Like that. Sure seems like it. So we need to do the same thing. For Seth right there, and I'm thinking, uh... Let's remove a thing just to make sure it runs efficiently for the five seconds it's going to run. Picking those up by hand because the robots are going to take forever considering they have to pick up uh, all of that crushed stone or all of the uh, crushed resources so it's much easier to do it this way. Easier for the robots anyway. bring very many splitters with us, so we're probably going to run out pretty quickly. Of course, this gets exceptionally complicated with uh, things like, you know, six lane balancers and stuff, but we'll deal with that when the time comes. For now, this will work. So all that stitching over there just to get the two resources on this side. chugging away at what we need. So we're going to have three belts here. Because so you have three rows of machines, so we need a three to six. Which is that one. No weird gaps or anything, this will work fine. So this needs to be spaced. Is that the correct direction? No. Kind of want to wait and not hook that up to the train, the train station, until we know that all this is hooked up, just so we can see what it does. Okay, we've got some more stitching to do here. It's like so far there's no conflict of belts. 
eventually we might run into something like that. We'll just have to adjust them off to the side by one space to make it work. So it looks like we just barely fit in here. Okay. That's going to fire up. Let's place our train down. Not that we need to for the test. But it's there and things are limited to four squares, so we're not consuming way too many resources. And, well, here we go. Let's see how this works. It's our first full power test of actually getting an output. So it looks like we're getting nice full output on the belts. Looks like it's being a little jittery through our uh, output here, but they're basically running at full speed. If there's any jitter, it's very small. Like they're, we're basically getting 100% out of that. So if you worry yourself over those tiny little details, you know <laughs> it's going to be a problem. But these are running at basically full speed, which is good. And those are only going to be running at half because it's only be running running uh, one set of machines instead of two, but I'm not going to bother putting yellow belts there just because of that. It looks like all the machines are green with the exception of the occasional ye yellow sputter, which is what you would expect because there's slightly too many machines. But certainly the belts are well utilized. And as far as output here, you can see our balancer is carefully sucking up one belt's worth of sapphirite and then the rest is equally being balanced out the sides and then a second well half belt of sapphirite because that's what we needed there but it's working cleanly that is just a that sees that's just so much iron triple the capacity of our iron output right now and even just running these couple machines and it's consuming a ton of power we're probably going to need like 10 times as many solar panels by the time this all this stuff is built and considering how much time that's going to take maybe you should get started on it soon i'm not sure but <laughs> the trains are filling up quickly all right well we can get this train set up here let's put some fuel in it Set its color to match iron, if we can. Um, something like that, maybe. And sorting. Iron. Just the one station. That station's, and that train's gonna wait, because it has nowhere to go. But this is our first output. All of this shenanigans for this, so far, this one train. But, uh, ore went in, like Bob Modium and whatever. Oh man, look at that. Didn't even notice, but all that was set up correctly, so it was just chugging away at all that stone. But, ores come in, and then, uh, ores go out, like that. That's how it's supposed to work. I believe we have a few more to set up here set them up as long as we have the resources to do so. So for copper, we need steratite and crotinium. And out of balancers. How many of those can we build? Splitters. Not very many of them. Considering that's the only thing we're out of, let's send the train over so we can just easily pick that up. I think we only have it set up to... It's just cool seeing everything just splooshing away. Uh, I think we only have it set up to build like 50 unless I changed it before 
be left. This 50 is definitely not enough. That's enough for a couple of those balancers, and that's it. Basically just short on lots and lots of iron. Hopefully everything's caught up now. Seems like it. How are the resources? <laughs> Critically low. Well, at least I upgraded a little bit, but I think we need more than that. Let's build four stacks for now. If we keep finding ourselves running out of resources and having to make a trip to get more with the truck, then that might be the sign to automate it with a train. So we'll have to see. Hey, train went by. It's our uh, first time seeing two trains pass each other on the tracks. Okay, so right now the train is unevenly unloading. If these chests were full, I could just pick up all the resources out of the trains and put them back in evenly. But since the chests are not full, they're actually kind of empty. I think the best we can do is send the train out right now to uh, get loaded. And fix it later. Uh, Curtinium is empty. Shouldn't it leave? Oh, it's set to full. Inventory empty. There we go. Fixing bugs. A more uh, balanced way of picking up resources from a train is just to stand in front of the belt and suck up resources that way. It takes longer, but it would be a balanced way of doing it. So it might have to do it that way in the future. So I have to keep fixing it. Yeah, it's working. <laughs> there we go, we've got our copper. Let's put it to the test and hook it up. Although, just with the energy use of everything. Whew, look at that. That's definitely too much. You see, it's daytime. <laughs> Brightness 100% and we're losing power because the accumulators have to help, <laughs> to help out here. So, we might run out of power at night. How many of the trains are here? Oh, see, three of the trains are gone. So that's why we're using so much power is because we're getting so much mining done. Oops, we definitely don't need these here. That's all the time we have for today, so I'll see you at the next episode. Thanks for watching.